Hi there, Nathan Patrick Taylor here. In this video, I'm going to take you through parsing a JSON file using Alteryx. If this is your first time visiting me, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out when I'm trying to develop the community. Also, if you like the video, please drop a like, leave a comment, and let me know what else I can add and do in the future. Thanks. All right, so let's get started here. What I've got is a very basic JSON file here. I'm going to pull it up and show it to you. It's uh, it's FDA event data, so I've downloaded it from the data.gov site. Uh, the very first couple of elements in this file are metadata, and then it goes right into a result section which uh, comprises the rest of the JSON file. And then uh, individual elements within uh, each result represent uh, columns, what would normally be columns in a database table. So what I'm really trying to do is parse out the uh, one record for every result and then the subsequent columns attached to that record. So within Alteryx, I've completed one of these already. I'm going to go back and I'm going to rebuild it with you now. But quickly what it does is I use a blob input and uh, I, there's two ways I look at blobs. They're binary large objects, but I've also heard them re referred to as basic large objects. And in this context, the basic lar large object fits a little bit better for me since it's just going to be a lot of text data. It's basically what's going to happen. We're going to pull that in. Then we're going to convert that blob field into actual text, encoded text, and then we'll parse out the JSON from it, transfer those the individual column we get into a couple separate columns of data, filter for only that results field to remove the metadata, and then we're going to do this. Uh, it's a transform uh, using a crosstab tool. I know there's a separate transpose tool in Alteryx, but I sort of think of the crosstab as the, the reverse transpose. So that's what's going to take all the rows and turn them into columns. So let's go ahead and, and build this out real quick. To do it, uh, we need to go over to the developer tab and we're going to choose blob input from the developer tab, drop it onto our canvas, and then go find the file that I downloaded here. It's a large file, 180 a megabyte file. Uh, so hopefully it'll load fast through Alteryx. If not, we'll speed it up and, uh, and get to the next parts in the step here so we're not waiting on it. And there's no additional configuration that I need to do for this particular file, so I'm just going to select the file name uh, and the location that I want, and then we're going to do a blob convert. All right, and the blob convert here is to take that basic large object and convert it into one enormous text field. And so to do that, I need to choose convert from a blob field because that's what I'm really doing here. I don't want to convert to a blob. I want to take it from a blob. And there's only going to be one output from the input tool and that's the blob. Then I need to change the encoding mechanism here to blob is text encoded. And I know from the website that I downloaded this file from that it's text encoded with ANSI 88591 Latin Roman numeral one. So yours may be encoded a different way. You'll know based on how you downloaded that file what type of encoding it has. You also have the ability to convert it to a different encoding mechanism. You can also convert uh, binary large objects that are stored as pictures, uh, P, you know, uh, PNG files, GIFs, JPEGs, that kind of thing. All right, so we have the encoding set. And now what we need to go do is actually handle the parsing piece here. So we'll pull a JSON parse tool onto our canvas. And we're going to be parsing that blob, uh, blob field that's now going to be this one huge enormous text field. And then from there, I'm going to output it into one single column containing text. You also have the option of outputting into it into columns for each individual data type. What that means is instead of getting one column with the values, you'll get a column for every single data type found for each element. Only one of those columns will actually have a value in it and that column will be whatever column it is for that data type. All right, so for example, in my case, I'm just going to have one column that's text. If you chose by data type, you would get a column for text, a column for numeric, a column for Boolean, and so on. Only one of those columns would be filled with data. All right, now that 
we've converted it uh, into one single giant text field. Now we need to go parse it, and that's back on the parse menu here at the beginning. Parse, and we need to say text to columns. Now, before I do anything more with it, I'm going to run this workflow because the text to column tool isn't going to make sense until you see the output from the previous tool. So let's go ahead and run the workflow. Okay, so the workflow is finished here, and I'm going to go to the previous tool and the output from the previous tool so you can see where we're coming from. So the JSON name column contains the elements, its full path within the JSON. So here's the metadata that we showed and then the results. A number indicating which record it is within the JSON file and then the subsequent element name or field name. In this case, manufacturer contact name. The, these are all record number zero or the first record. It's zero indexed and then each of the field names. And then the corresponding value. Here's where I said if you chose to put the the file into separate data types, a data type for each column. You would have a data type column for date, and that would be filled in, but the string and numeric one would be blank. Then you would have a column for string, but the date and the numeric would be blank. Okay, so that's how it would output it here. For the text to column, what I need to do now is take the results, parse out the results, the record number, and the column name that I want it to be, and it's delimited by a period. So what we're gonna do is go over our text to columns. The delimiter right now is a comma, so we'll change it to a period. And then I would say I wanna split it into three columns. There are actually more than that. There can be a sub element sitting underneath some of these other fields, but for this example, we're not gonna worry about it right now. All right, and then it's gonna output a name for each item, it's going to say JSON underscore name one, name two, name three for each of the three columns it's going to output. All right, so that's the output we're going to get. You'll notice right now that two and three are blank. It's just got one since I didn't choose the right delimiter. So let's rerun the workflow and see the output. Okay, so all done here. And now you'll see I've got the name of the record, the record number, and the value output, all right? So we're gonna make a, a tiny modification to this. I'm gonna go over to the preparation tab here and we're gonna choose, uh, well, I'm not gonna do a select yet. I'm actually gonna do filter. And what I want to do for the filter is I want to only take in the records where that JSON name one is results, okay? Because I, I don't care about the metadata. So we'll say JSON name one equals results. All right, so that's that'll be in the true part, and that'll give me just the results piece that I want. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a select here, select tool, and I want to only pull in uh, JSON name one, JSON name two, and then uh, JSON name three plus the value string. All right, so and actually I don't. Once I filtered, I don't really care about JSON name one anymore. So what we'll do is we'll go over to the select tool. We'll remove the name and we'll remove name one as I don't really care about those two fields. We'll rename value to value. So that's the actual value and we'll drag it to the bottom or we'll just move it to the bottom there. And then value name, uh, JSON name two is going to be the record number. So we'll label it record. And then name three is contains the field name. So we'll separate it like that. All looks good. Let's go ahead and rerun the workflow. All right, so looking at the end of that data set and what I get out of it is the record number, and these are all results, the field name, and the value that I suspect that it, that it should be. Okay, now we need to take all those rows of data and sort of transform them into columns. So I want one record zero that has all of these fields as columns, all right? So to do that, we're gonna to go to the transform tool, transform a pane here and we'll choose cross tab and we'll drop it after that select. And what I wanna do is I wanna group by the record, all right? So for each record, all of these records, I only want one output. So we're gonna group by the record and then the new column headers are going to be determined by the field name so that each column has its own field name. 
and then the value is going to be the value field that I relabeled. And then I don't want to concatenate, I just want to take the first value that's encountered in the data set. I may have to go back and make changes to the field size. Uh, depending on how it parses out the data, we'll see what happens when we run it and then decide what we want to do. There's one other thing that I might add on to this particular data set, uh, and I, I might do, not do it now, but an auto field might be helpful at the end to change the numeric fields to numeric and, and dates to date because there are date fields in there. Uh, but we'll leave it the way that it is for now and, uh, and let it run. So I'm just going to put another select at the end just so I can see the output and we'll run the workflow. All right, so our workflow is finished and we'll click on the end connector here. And you'll see that everything got converted to string. I didn't use the auto field in this example. But now I do have a record for each individual record. And then a, the field names are making up the columns within the data set. All right, so I've got everything parsed out. I'm going to leave this demo there, but there are a few other steps that you might want to go through. One is we need to make sure the data types are all correct for the fields that we parsed out. The other thing that we'll need to do is maybe clean up a few of the fields in here that have some extra spaces after them or some fields that are still not coming over uh, with the right data types put into it. So those are some of the things that we'd still have to do, but a very quick simple example of how to parse JSON data using Alteryx. Like I said early on, subscribe to the channel, drop a like and leave me some comments for future videos. Thanks.